Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I am super excited because I got my hands on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered device, and I've been doing some emulation testing on it. This is an absolute powerhouse when it comes to gaming and emulation. So if you're not familiar with the Gen 1, this is a flagship CPU. This is what everybody's going to be using in 2022 for their flagship devices, and it's the upgrade from the Snapdragon 888. Qualcomm has done away with the three-digit numbering system that they had with their higher-end chipsets in the past. So this is Gen 1, and it is outstandingly fast. And the device I have right now is the Motorola Edge X30. This isn't a review on the phone itself, but it's actually been a pretty decent phone. This was the quickest phone that I could get shipped from China that had that Gen 1 CPU, so that's why we have it here. We've got 8 gigabytes of RAM. As you can see, we've got that 8-core Gen 1 CPU with an X2 core up to 3 gigahertz. And this does offer a decent bump in performance on single core and multi-core performance out of this Gen 1 when you compare it to the A88. But really where this chip shines is the new GPU. It's the Arduino 730, and this does offer up to 30% more performance than the A88+. So before we jump into the emulation testing, I wanted to give you a quick look at some benchmarks. First up, Geekbench 5, single core, 1225, multi, 3727. Looking really good here for an Android device. Vulcan performance out of this GPU is phenomenal. Here we have 3D Mark Wildlife with a 9,820. And the final benchmark I wanted to show off here was Antutu, coming in with a crazy score of 988,646. Now, I think we could hit a million with devices like this. I'm actually pretty sure we will see that in the future. But when it comes down to it, the Motorola Edge X30 doesn't have the best cooling system built in. And as you can see from a cold benchmark here, it went up 14 degrees Celsius while running Antutu. So when the other phones start coming out with better cooling systems, we will be able to get a little more performance out of it. And we can keep that performance up for a longer period of time. But yeah, so far this new SoC has performed amazingly, and like I mentioned, this video isn't about reviewing this specific device, it's more about the chipset inside of it and emulation. What can this thing really do? Now there's one big feature I want to show off by the end of this video that is specific to these newer Motorola devices, and that's ready for. It's basically their answer to Samsung DeX, and it's really great. You'll see that at the end, but let's go ahead and get into some emulation and see what this chip can really do. So it might not seem too impressive here, but what we have running is the arcade version of Killer Instinct using MAME. I'm actually using RetroArch with the MAME 2010 core. On the Snapdragon 865 up to the 888, I've been able to get it to run, but not at a constant 60 like you're seeing here on this Gen 1. Really impressive to see this game running, and I know it's an older one, but if you've ever tried this on a lower end phone, you know how hard it can be to run. Next up, real quick, we've got Dreamcast using ReDream. I just went up to 1080p. We can go much higher with this, and as long as the game's compatible with it, the Gen 1 is going to run this at full speed, no problem at all. Moving over to Sega Saturn using Yobase and Shiro, and I'm upscaled to 720p. Again, kind of just like seeing Killer Instinct run on this little device, it might not seem that impressive. But upscaling on Android does take a lot of GPU and CPU power, and with this little chip here, the Gen 1, we're running at 60. Really impressive. Moving over to N64, at 1440 by 1080 using the standalone version of Mupin 64 Plus FZ. To tell you the truth, I probably should have dropped it down just one here, but this is a harder one to run. The easier stuff like Beetle Adventure Racing, Diddy Kong, Mario Kart, it's going to run just fine at this upscaled resolution. Now, I wanted to test out some PSP, and real quick, I want to give you a look at the settings I have here. No hacks, but I'm at 10x resolution, which is absolutely overkill for this screen here. We've also got the upscale level at 3x, filtering at 16, and for most of the stuff that I tested, it runs perfectly fine. This game natively ran at 30 FPS. There are some hacks out there, but I didn't install any. As you can see, we're getting full speed here with PSP at 10x. Now, some of the harder to emulate stuff can't quite do 10x, but 5 and 7 does work out quite well. With Midnight Club, I was able to go up to 7x, and with the Chains of and with Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta, which you'll see running at the end here, I was able to go to 5x with that scaling at 3 and filtering set at 16. But I wanted to show one more running off with that Vulcan back end, 10x standalone PP SSPP, Tekken 6, looking great here. 
Really amazing PSP emulation performance on this Gen 1 Snapdragon. And finally here for PSP, like I mentioned, we couldn't quite do 10x with this one. It was a bit laggy, so I just dropped it down to 5x, still got that filtering going. 60 FPS with Ghost of Sparta, Chains of Olympus, and like I mentioned, Midnight Club, which is another harder one to emulate. 7x resolution. When it comes to 3DS, the Snapdragon Gen 1 also does a pretty good job. Here we have the Citra emulator from the Google Play Store, 2x, and with some games I was able to go up to 4x, like DOA Dimensions, and I also tried 3x with this game here, but I was getting a little bit of lag. So when it comes to Wii and GameCube emulation on an Android chipset, this is definitely some of the best that I've seen. Here we have the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan back in, 1080p with Sonic Colors. Now trying to take these games up to 1080p does really hit that GPU up, but we have plenty of power with this Gen 1. I was really surprised by the GPU performance. So I went ahead and tested a GameCube game, which has always given me trouble on mobile when I try to upscale any, and that's F-Zero GX. We're on this lava track or the fire track, which is a harder one to emulate. 1080p with the OpenGL back in. I was getting much better performance with this game using OpenGL over Vulkan. But yeah, this little chip can definitely handle GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. So we gotta see how it does with PS2 using Ether SX2. Sly Cooper, 2X, OpenGL back in, running super smooth. Now when it comes down to it, this emulator is in early development, so some games just aren't going to work so well, but I had really good performance with everything that I tested on this chip so far. And most of the stuff that I tested can be upscaled anywhere from 2 to 5x, except for a couple, like Ratchet and Clank. Now this one was giving me trouble at 2x, whether I was using the OpenGL back in or Vulkan, so I had to drop it down to 1x, but it's running quite well. Every once in a while I do get a couple dips, but I'd say this is playable, and hopefully in the future we get some more optimizations and we can upscale this on this chip. I got a couple more to test here, and one of my favorite PS2 games ever made is Gran Turismo 4. And on this setup here, we can go to 3x with it. It looks really good at 3x, I hope it's coming across okay on camera, and it's running amazingly. I didn't see any dips at 3x, and there's a chance we could even go up to 4x on certain tracks in different situations, but when it comes to Rally, 3x is good to go. And finally here for PS2 on the phone's built-in screen, God of War 2, 2x resolution, great performance. Again, trying to go up to 3 with this one does make it dip a bit. Alright, so the last thing I wanted to take a look at in this video is very phone specific. Now this does work with some of the newer Motorola phones. It's called Ready 4, and it's Motorola's answer to Samsung DeX. So I've just plugged this into my USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. This is a B-Link version. Now as you can see, it pops right up on the external display. I've got a few options here, but we're going to be taking a look at desktop mode. And I will have a full video coming up because there's a lot you can do with this. I'm a huge fan of it, been using it for the past few days, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know how much I love Samsung DeX, but I gotta say, if Motorola continues with this, it could definitely beat it out. So here we have Ether SX2 over HDMI, Crash Bandicoot, Wrath of Cortex at 5x resolution, which is still overkill because we can only do 1080p out of this USB Type-C adapter, but it does run at full speed, which is really amazing. So yeah, keep an eye out on the channel if you're interested in Ready 4. This is an awesome little addition to the Android operating system on Motorola phones. So yeah, I mean, we're going to get a ton of flagships with the Snapdragon Gen 1. And as you saw in this video, it does handle emulation really, really well. I've also tested some native Android gaming, and it's really hard to beat. We took a look at the GPU scores from Antutu and 3D Mart. This is definitely at the top of the list, and I'm sure we're going to see even better performance pulled out of this with some of the gaming phones with like a built-in cooling system and things like that. But the way it sits right now, the Snapdragon Gen 1 is the most powerful chip that I've ever tested for emulation when it comes to Android devices, and it's only going to get better from here. 
I will have a couple more videos coming up with the Gen 1, so keep an eye on the channel. If you're interested in seeing anything running on this chipset, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.